Hi, welcome to Elonix. In this episode, we'll make an LED roulette circuit using transistor, triple fat timer IC, 4017 IC, and a few other components. This circuit mimics the roulette table you generally find in casinos. You need to touch a pair of contacts and the LEDs rotate and come to a halt at a random number. So basically, people can bet a certain amount on a number of their choice, and at whomever selected number the LED stops at, will get the entire amount bet on all the numbers or you can also use this as an led dice for the list of components required link to the circuit diagram or any other information please refer to the description below also don't miss the explanation part i am using the top second row as positive rail and the bottom first row as negative rail Place BC547 transistor on the breadboard such that the flat surface faces back so the pinouts are emitter, base and collector. Now connect the emitter pin to positive rail. Connect positive terminal of 1 microfarad capacitor to positive rail. Connect one terminal of 3.3 mega ohm resistor to positive rail. Now connect a 10 mega ohm resistor between the negative terminal of 1 microfarad capacitor and the other terminal of 3.3 mega ohm resistor. Connect the common terminals of 10 mega ohm and 3.3 mega ohm resistors to the base of transistor. Place two touch contacts, one connected to negative rail and the other connected to negative terminal of the 1 microfarad capacitor. Now place triple fat timer IC on the breadboard with its notch facing up and these are the pin numbers. Connect pin 1 to negative rail and pin A to positive rail. Connect pins 2 and 6 of the IC and pins 2 and 7 of the IC and pins 4 and 8. Place a 3.3 mega ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor between pin 2 of the IC and negative rail. Now connect a 10 kilo ohm resistor between collector of transistor and pin 6 of the triple fat timer IC. Place 4017 IC on the breadboard with its notch facing up and the pinouts are as shown. Connect pin 8 of the IC to negative rail and pin 16 to positive rail. Now connect pins 8 and 13 and pins 13 and 15 of the 4017 IC. Connect the output of triple fat timer IC which is at pin 3 to the clock input of 4017 IC at pin 14. Now place all the 10 LEDs on the breadboard in a circular pattern. I have arranged all the LEDs such that the anode of each LED lies on a different breadboard column. Connect cathodes of all the LEDs Extend the negative rail and place a 330 ohm resistor between the cathodes of LEDs and negative rail. Here you can observe how I grouped the cathodes of some LEDs together and connected all the groups using breadboard connectors. Now connect the anodes of LEDs to the respective output pins of 4017 IC. These are the pin numbers of 4017 IC to which I have connected the respective LEDs. Now place a circular marker on the LEDs. Unlike how I mark numbers here, I suggest you to mark numbers randomly instead of sequentially. Finally, turn on the power supply and the circuit is now ready to be played. This circuit is made up of three different blocks. When I touch both the contacts, this one microfarad capacitor charges because of current flowing through my finger. This is a PNP transistor, so if voltage at the base is more towards negative, the transistor is biased and starts conducting current through the collector and emitter pins. Otherwise, no current flows between emitter and collector pins. So more the charge across the capacitor, more negative the voltage will be at the base of transistor and so the conductivity between the collector and emitter pins of transistor will be high. We need a square wave to operate the 4017 IC. In order for this triple fat timer IC to produce a square wave, this 100 nanofarad capacitor has to charge and discharge continuously. The discharge happens via pin 7 and charges through 10k resistor. And the frequency of output of triple fat timer IC is proportional to how fast this 100 nanofarad capacitor charges and discharges. The 4017 decade counter has 10 output pins. Each output pin is connected to a single LED and all the cathodes of LEDs are connected to negative rail via a resistor. Initially, the first LED will be turned on. 
For each rise of signal at the clock pin, the next LED turns on and the previous one turns off. So the speed with which this transition takes place is directly proportional to the frequency of clock input signal. The speed of rotation of the LEDs is controlled by the frequency of clock input signal, which is the same as frequency of output signal from the Trulfa timer IC, which is proportional to how quick this 100 nanofarad capacitor charges, which again is controlled by the conductivity between the collector and emitter pins of transistor, which depends on how negative the voltage is at the base, which again is directly proportional to the voltage across this 1 microfarad capacitor. Now when I touch both the contacts, the 1 microfarad capacitor charges quickly. So the conductivity between emitter and collector of transistor increases quickly. So this 100 nanofarad capacitor is able to charge quickly. So the output frequency of triple five timer IC increases quickly. And as a result, the LEDs start rotating faster. When I remove my finger, this 1 microfarad capacitor discharges slowly thanks to 10 mega ohm resistor. So the conductivity between the collector and emitter of the transistor reduces very slowly. So the speed with which this 100 nanofarad capacitor can be charged is reduced slowly. And so the frequency of output wave from the triple five timer IC reduces slowly. And so the speed of rotation of the LEDs reduces slowly. And finally the output comes to a halt. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new. Do subscribe and have fun.